imagine finding you in best real estate buys. Subdivide me. I should say not, I wouldn't share you with anyone. Oh. <laughs> 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 dear, what do you want? I'm trying to finish reading the thing I was reading before you trapped me. Well, okay, there you are. Uh, listen to this, Brad. Gee, this is interesting. Uh, the university planted a time capsule in the ground 50 years ago, and they dug it up yesterday. Yeah, I know, dear. I read it. A and the things they buried, a pair of glasses that belonged to Teddy Roosevelt, a recording by Caruso, an autographed picture of Sarah Bernhardt. <laughs> uh, Joan, what are, you, uh, what are you looking for? I thought maybe they might have buried some of those movies we've been seeing on television lately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and listen to this, honey. In that time capsule, they also wrote predictions of the kind of world we'd have in 50 years. It says that one day the automobile will do away with the horse. Well, they were right about that. <laughs> and in 50 years, the life expectancy of man would be 90 years. Well, they were wrong about that. Yes, but how could they know that the automobile that did away with the horse would also do away with the pedestrians. <laughs> you know, they made some pretty shrewd guesses at that, huh? Oh, you know, it, it must be fun making predictions and years later digging them up and seeing how right you were, huh? Yeah, I suppose it is. Brad? Huh? I just thought of something. Uh, the paper reminded me. Do you remember when we were first married? Uh, oh, one evening, uh, I typed some predictions of what our marriage would be like in 10 years. That's been over 11 now. By George, I do remember, Joni. And you wouldn't let me see what you had written. That's right. <laughs> well, look, it's been 10 years. Uh, what did you predict? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> now, where did I put those predictions? I hid them. I know it was in a safe place. I wonder if I could uh, put it behind that desk, maybe, huh? Well, now, look, Joni, if you haven't run across it after 11 years of housekeeping, you, you won't find it now. <laughs> That'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack, <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh, yes. I had the curtains down two weeks ago and washed them. <laughs> Just a hunch, dear. <laughs> oh, forget about it. We'll never find it. There's no sense looking. <laughs> no, it's not up here either. I told you there was no sense looking. Oh, I give up. Hi, Brad. Hello, Bev. Hi, John. Hello, sis. Hi, John. Well, that's a nice, convenient place to keep a wife. She's out of the way, yet you always know just where to find her. Yeah, yeah. Help me, Brad. Yeah. Yikes! Are there any survivors? Oh, uh, we were just looking for something. Yeah, we haven't had any luck. Oh, what you looking for? Uh, some predictions I wrote about our marriage, what it would be like in 10 years. Well, it doesn't matter much. I couldn't predict anything better than I have right now. You know, it, it's very funny. I remember distinctly everything I did that night except what I wrote and where I hid it. <laughs> well, why don't you reconstruct what happened? Maybe it'll come back to you that way. You mean, do everything I remember that night and that might remind me? Well, that's a wonderful idea, Beverly. Brad, go out and come in like you did 11 years ago, will you, Brad? I have the pajamas. This is exactly what I'll need, dear. The neighbors. I'll know exactly right. Well, you know. Now, let's see, honey. Uh, oh, I was alone. I remember that. Uh, so you go over there and pretend you were a vase, huh? I had a nice vase over there then. Let's see. And I was sitting at the couch and typing, typing, yes. I'm waiting for my Brad to come home. <laughs> Okay, Brad. Hello, Johnny. I'm home. Lover. You came around the other way, Brad. That much you remember. Oh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> Will you do it again? Oh, <laughs> throw honey, me off. Okay. Well. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, Johnny. Johnny. I'm home. Lover. Hello, dear. D Dear, what is that? That isn't what you called me when we were first married, dear. Oh, Johnny, but well, if you don't I'm reconstruct any, uh, one word could throw me off. 
Come on now, Grandma. All Bradley. right. Huh? Hello, poopsie whoopsie. Hello, Snoopy Wickham. That's not the way you kissed me. Well, I know, but... Oh, well, I, I can't... Oh, oh, all right, all right. That's the way you kissed me. And then I staggered back to the couch. Oh, let's cut this out. But that was the best part where you went with me. You remember that? Okay, okay, all right. Let's see, then the, and I was typing and I said, guess what I'm doing, Brad? I'm typing predictions of what our marriage will be like in 10 years. Uh, let's see. No, I want to surprise you in 10 years. <laughs> And then I started to look for a place to hide it. And then I said, uh, Brad, and be sure and turn your back, honey. I don't want you to watch now. No peeking where I hide this. And then I... That's it. I remember. Where'd you hide it, Joan? In one of the loose bricks in the fireplace. Oh, I remember <laughs> as if it was yesterday. I can't... Joan, Joan, uh, dear, dear, it, it, it looks like you were wrong. It... Uh, no, it was a loose brick in the fireplace. I, I, I remember it distinctly. Uh... Oh. What's the matter, Joan? Uh, it was in the fireplace, all right. <laughs> but I forgot one teensy-weensy detail. What's that? It wasn't in this house. What? Uh, no, when we were first married, we lived on Willow Street. You remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, we'll go over there someday. Let's go we'll... now, Brad. Well, no, I can't, dear. Oh, come I have on, to... honey. This one's in Oh, put you, put you, put you, change your clothes, darling. Oh, you know how anxious I am. I'll get the car out of the garage, dear. Lucky that I... Uh, oh, Bev, uh, do me a favor. Uh, the room needs to be tidied up just a little. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But no, no, dear, wait a minute. What does it say? What, what did you predict? Oh, it's nothing, dear. It's silly, really. It is. No, no, come on, dear. After all the trouble we went to, I want to see what it says. Oh. <laughs> uh, predictions of Joan Stevens after being married for one week, not to be read for ten years. I predict that after ten years of marriage, I will still be the happiest girl in the world. I don't read the rest, Brad. I'd feel awful. No, dear, no, 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 honey. It's very sentimental, and I'm, I'm really touched. I really am. I uh, could have married Roger Brooks, who has a million dollars. I could have gone around the world on my honeymoon. Roger would give me diamonds, a home in the country, a mink coat. But even though Brad is poor now, I predict that in ten years I'll have all the things Roger could have given me. I know Brad will be famous and rich. <laughs> Brad, you're not going to pay any attention to what a silly young bride said 10 years ago. Well, I was just a child bride. I think it was 11 years old or something. Now, now, look, Joan, look. I failed you, haven't I? Well, of course not, Brad. No, I, I can't give you trips around the world, diamond rings, and certainly not a mink coat. Well, believe me, Brad. No, I you should have married Roger Brooks and his million dollars. Honey, I married you because I loved you. No, Joan, I'm, I'm honest enough to face it. No, you've been a wonderful girl, and I just haven't given you the things that you deserve. Brad, listen, dear. Did you find the listen, predictions over there? Huh? Did you find the predictions? I certainly did, and they've caused me the worst grief and trouble that I've ever had. Huh? Uh, Beverly, let me tell you one thing. If I live to be 100 years old, I will never, ever make another prediction. And that's a prediction. <laughs> Joni! Joni, I'm home! Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> Gee! What's wrong? Well, I'm just surprised, that's all. Uh, when you left this morning, you were so depressed, like you lost your spark. <laughs> With that kiss, you must have had your battery recharged. <laughs> I feel fine. I'm as happy as a lark. Well, I don't know what's happened, but I'm sure glad it has. Oh, Brad, you were so foolish to be upset about those silly old predictions that I made. Well, I was thinking it over. I'm not going to be upset anymore. Good. All right. Oh, oh here you are, dear. I've got huh? something for you. Here, here, come well, on. What? Well, no, no. Well, Open what is it up. it, Brad? No, well, dear, don't ask me. Just, uh, well, it's not my it. birthday. It's not our anniversary. It's a... It's a mink coat. Well, Brad, you didn't get this for me. Well, it's for one of us, and I'd look awful silly walking into court with that tomorrow. <laughs> Why? 
Well, it's your first prediction come true. Then another car, and then a diamond ring. Dad, we can't afford a mink coat. Oh, that's all right. I didn't need that special savings account. Now, honey, you were saving that for that sailboat that you wanted. Well, to. maybe I can't give you all the things like Roger Brooks could at once, but you'll, you'll get them. So come on, dear. Come no, on. Brad, Try I don't it. want to. Try it on. No. Come, come on, dear. It won't bite you. It's just fur. They took the rest of the mink out. Oh, <laughs> come on, dear. Ah. Gee. Gee, you mind mink, huh? Oh, honey, it looks wonderful, just beautiful. Come on, dear, turn around. That's it. I want to see how you look. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to see how it looks in the full-length mirror, Brad. I've never had a big coat you. Do you mean you actually returned that beautiful mink coat Brad gave you? Uh-huh, and believe me, it wasn't easy. In fact, I think it was tougher for me to give up the mink coat than it was for the mink. I don't get it. Brad wanted you to have the coat, didn't he? Sure, but don't you see what I'm doing, Bev? I'm proving to Brad that a mink coat doesn't mean a thing to me. Oh. And then he'll realize that I'm perfectly happy with my marriage and he'll forget about that wealthy Roger Brooks. Gee, that's pretty clever. <laughs> well, believe me, Beverly, the most important ingredient in a successful marriage is psychology. Sorry, I still think a husband is. <laughs> oh, say, I think I hear Brad driving up now. Say, if you want to see how that psychology really pays off, why don't you go out in the other room and listen when I tell him what I did? Well, John, I don't know. Uh, well, it'll be very good for you to know when you get married. Gee, that sounds good. When I get married, <laughs> I'm married, Bev. Why, that kid's been seeing too much television. Hello, lover. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, <laughs> Honey, have I got a surprise for you. Uh, a surprise? Yes, I returned the mink coat you bought me. You returned it? Doesn't that prove something to you, Brad? You better prove something. <laughs> Probably wasn't good enough. You want a mink that cost $10,000. I knew you'd be thrilled. Well, maybe Roger Brooks could afford something better, but I can't. I knew it'd make you happy, honey. Maybe you should have married Roger Brooks. I, I knew th <laughs> What? You heard me, Joan. Try to do something, and just because oh, someone Brad, has all I the money in the world... Really, I... So that's how psychology pays off. Boy, am I glad I was listening in the other room. Now I know exactly what not to do when I get married. Never mind the wise cracks. <laughs> well, Brad wouldn't even let me explain. All he can think about is Roger Brooks and all his money. <laughs> Say, what makes you two so sure that Roger Brooks is still rich? Maybe he's lost all his money by now. Maybe you'd be worse off if you had married that guy. Maybe I would. Maybe, maybe... Oh, baby, did you give me a maybe. Maybe. Huh? <laughs> I gotta get the telephone, Buck. Johnny, what are you doing? Well, I'm gonna call Roger Brooks. You know, he was always a big plunger in great big deals. He may even be broke now. Boy, if he is, that'll really solve my problem. Yeah, that's right. Then Brad wouldn't have anyone to be envious of. Exactly. Hello. Uh, may I speak to Roger Brooks, please? One moment, please. Mr. Brooks is on another extension. Look, Ted, we need that piece of property. Offer him another 100000 Or 200000 That's right. Use your own judgment. Bye-bye, boy. Miss Morley, are they ready on that call to London yet? In a moment, sir. Oh, there's a Mrs. Joan Stevens calling. Joan Stevens? Yes, sir. She says she's an old friend of yours from college. Joan? Oh, Joanie! Hold that call to London. Put her on, please. Hello, Joan? Hello, Roger. It's so nice to hear your voice, Joan. Do you realize it's been years since I've last spoken to you? Yes, it has, hasn't it? Well, I just called to see how things are going. Oh, pretty well. Hey, you excuse not. me, Mr. Brooks, but this is urgent. Pardon Consolidated me. has outbid us by two million on that factory. Shall we let them buy it? No, no, I simply can't afford that. Bev, I think he's broke. I heard him tell someone that he can't afford something. <gasps> Poor fellow. Well, that's the way it is with that kind of a man. Oh, One minute he's way take up. Two hundred thousand cash he's... I offered. Go to three hundred thousand. In a deal like this that involves seven and a half million, a one hundred thousand here or there doesn't matter. And as soon as you sign the papers, get to work on that ransom. That steamship company's a steal at 20 million. Johnny, what's the matter? 
Uh, like I was saying, Bev, uh, this kind of fella, one minute he's way up, and the next minute he's up even further. Way further. <laughs> Boy, he's loaded. He's got money like the Sahara's got sand. Sa sand. Hello. Hello, Joan? Uh, yes, Roger. I I'm sorry about the little interruptions. Are you sure there isn't something I can do for you? No, not a thing, Roger. Th Say, maybe there is something you can do for me. Well, you just name it, Joan. Remember, money's no object. Well, money has nothing to do with this. Uh, if you're free tonight, Roger, I was wondering if you would just come over to the house. I know this is a very big favor of me to ask of you, uh, but I certainly will appreciate it. You see, I made some predictions about it. Brad. Yes? I'm sorry, dear, about the mink coat, but I just wanted to show you that minks and diamonds don't mean a thing to me. Well, according to the predictions you made ten years ago, they were quite important. But I was a silly young girl in those days. I was immature, foolish, and senseless when I married you. <laughs> no, maybe you're right. You should have married Roger Brooks. You'd be living in the lap of luxury. I wonder who that can be. Good evening. Is there something I can do for you, my poor young fellow? John, don't, don't you recognize me? Recognize? Well, should I? Let me see. Not Roger. Roger Brooks? Well, Fred, isn't this a coincidence? It's Roger Brooks. Hello, Fred. Hello, Roger. Oh, Roger, here, let me take your hat. And I'm Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, well uh, won't you uh, sit down, oh, Roger? thanks. Yes, Roger, how nice to see you after all these years. Why? Uh, well, Roger, uh, how are things going? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> I had a few setbacks, uh, but everything's fine now. I'm right back on my feet. <laughs> Yes, uh, so we see. Oh, 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 that. Well, well, you see, I've been so busy. I've had all these board meetings and things, you know, things like that. Uh, I hardly had time to get my shoes fixed. Uh, I understand. <laughs> well, I just don't make handkerchiefs the way they used to. It's either I. Roger, would you uh, care for a bite to eat? Oh, I. Oh, oh. no, thanks. I had. Lunch at the club. Oh, well, Roger, please have a piece of fruit. Well, then I'll just have an apple. <laughs> uh, here, uh, have a banana. Uh, and, and have an orange. Bring up the And uh, have another apple. Uh, have another orange. Uh, have a banana. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there isn't any more. Uh, tell me the truth, Roger. Uh, when is the last time you had a square meal? What's today? <laughs> Roger, why didn't you come to us sooner? Well, I, I suppose you could call it pride, but... I might as well be honest, Brad. All that talk about board of directors meetings just isn't true. Believe it or not, I'm broke. No. Brad, if he says yes, why do you say no? Roger ought to know if he's broke or not. You're broke, aren't you, Roger? Real broke. Oh, really? Well, Roger, is there uh, anything I can do to help? Well, I'm, I'm waiting on this big deal, you know, and I've got all my ready cash. You, you understand that, tied up. And I was wondering, well, could you let me have uh, maybe twenty dollars for a while? I, I certainly, <laughs> certainly, Roger. And I, uh, well, I hope you stay away from those uh, big deals that you're always getting involved in. Oh, I will, I will. I've really learned my lesson. Yes, I know. You remember I told you years ago to get a regular job and stop trying to be a captain of industry? No, that's right. You did. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I've never seen so much money. It's stage money. It's money. You no, know, it, it looks like the real thing. No, you be an actor, didn't you? And, uh, what, this is a... Uh, yes, well, Are you sure? Yes, there used to be an actor. And he, what? And he kept all of them. Well, well, he won't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you get the phone, please, Brad? Yes, yes, yes. Hello? If you come back later, I'll iron them for you. Uh, well, uh, yes, this is the Stevens residence. What'd you say? You, you want to speak to uh, Mr. Brooks? Well, uh, just a minute. Uh, Roger, it's, it's for you. 
Me with that man? That's strange. <laughs> Hello? Miss Morley? I told you not to phone me here. I told... I don't care if it is urgent. I don't care. You can get it for three million. Well, of course, close the deal. Yes, and you better transfer enough cash to cover that steamship company. Left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Miss Morley. Tell Ted to make a higher bid on that lumber bill. Another hundred thousand. Or two hundred thousand. Or three hundred thousand. Or three hundred thousand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bye. Uh, oh. Oh, the telephone go high. Well, I can explain that to you. Yes, I understand. It was a big deal. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I guess I better be running along. I want to thank you for the uh, twenty. Oh, yeah. oh, that's all right. No rush to pay me back. It's okay. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Is Mr. Brooks here? Uh, no, thank you. We don't care for any right well, now. Wait, John, didn't you say Mr. Just a minute. Did you say uh, Mr. Brooks? Yes, I... Oh, there you are, sir. I thought I'd remind you, you're due downtown in 15 minutes. Thank you, Randolph. It's a new service of the Salvation Army, Brad. You see, they uh, drive the men to the mission now. It makes them feel more important, you know, dignified. Never mind, Joan, never mind. I suppose all that poverty was for my benefit. Well, I, uh... Yeah. Joan, what have you got to say? Well, you see, I just, uh, I, I called up Roger and I knew how he felt about it. So he was kind enough and I thought that maybe when he came, I, would you run me over, please? Yes, ma'am, where to? No place, just run me over. I, I need some sympathy from this man. Uh, you'll be sorry, too, Brad, but I'll be all sick and everything and, and I won't be able to avenge your... Uh, you, you have the heavy car, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. Let's go. <laughs> 